Hi, my name is Wesley, otherwise known as HeyW. I'm a freelance 3D artist and animator, and this is part three of my series on making an animated short from scratch. This video will be on creating the actual set in which the animation takes place, specifically focusing on the things that are required to begin animation, like the base terrain, his shack, and the tree. The smaller details like the grass, materials, background stuff, these will be things I address later in the series when it comes to rendering. First making his cabin, I'll start with this free log model I got from Sketchfab. Even in situations where it's something I could make myself, it never hurts to look for free models or even spending a few bucks as it'll obviously save you a lot of time. After importing, I'll get rid of the FBX material and replace it with the Redshift material and then plug in all the textures to their respective ports. Generally, the color space for most maps, other than diffuse, should be set to raw. This is especially true for normal maps, where if it's left on RGB, the results will be very wrong. This isn't true 100% of the time because it will depend on who made the texture, but in this case, I set the specular roughness and normal maps all to raw. I'll create a redshift bump map node to connect the normal map to. I'll set the map type to tangent space normal and increase the scale to 1. I'm going for a simple log cabin style house, so I'll start by duplicating the log staggered and forming the first wall. I'll vary up the orientation of the log some so it doesn't look like it's repeating. And then I'll group these together and duplicate it four times to make the four walls. And because of the staggered placement, they should meet up nicely. I'll group this all up and then center it to the grid and now I'm ready to start on the roof. I'll form the roof with a simple plane with one subdivision, and I'll use this to scatter leaves on. I'll create another plane and assign the leaf texture I used for the hat. I end up replacing this with new leaves later, so this is just a placeholder for now. With the leaf selected, I'll create a mesh network, set the distribution type to mesh, and then I'll drag and drop the roof plane as the input mesh. I'll add an offset node and set the transformation space to local, and I'll use this to rotate the leaves so they're aligned with the slope of the roof. At this point, I figured it'd be a good time to try out some different leaves, so I create some planes and then make some materials for them. These are all free textures that can be found on CG Bookcase, and the material setup is exactly the same as the log, except for one difference being the transparency. While you could just use the shader's opacity channel, I use a sprite node and plug the texture I want to use for alpha into here. So instead of making a surface more or less transparent, you could think of this node as taking a pair of scissors and cutting out the object along the alpha channel. The benefit here is much faster render times. The downside is you can't have partial transparency as it's either fully opaque or fully transparent. Another downside to Redshift's sprite shader is it always shows up gray in the viewport. The workaround for this is to select the shading group, plug the sprite into the redshift surface shader, and then you can plug whatever you want into the native surface shader. For example, here I'm using a Lambert. And using shading groups this way, whatever is plugged into this port will be visible in the viewport, and whatever is plugged in here will be used in the render. So I normally use a Lambert for the viewport material so I can see the color and transparency correctly, while the sprite is what's actually being rendered. So with that out of the way, I'll go to the mash repo node and add my new leaves to the list of objects, and then I'll remove the original leaf. I also need to add an ID node so the three leaf types are randomly shuffled between. Also I want to mention when working with a bunch of transparent objects on top of each other like this, you may want to set the viewport transparency mode to depth peeling or alpha cut to avoid flickering or weird transparency effects. I adjust the scale of the leaves and the number of them to try and make the roof look nice and dense. Now on one side of the roof the leaves are rotated correctly, but the other side they're flipped. So I add another offset node, set the transformation space to local again. I'll set the Y rotation to 180, and this flips everything, so I'll use a falloff object to only affect the leaves that I want to flip. Now all the leaves are positioned correctly, but the surface is a little too smooth, so I want to break it up some. I'll start by just deforming the leaf planes a little bit. I'll then add a random node to the mesh network to mix up the transform some. I'll select the mesh output mesh, duplicate it, and then disable the mesh network so what's left is just a normal mesh of all these leaves. Now I'll edit the vertices with soft select, I'll set the falloff mode to volume, and with this I can pretty easily create a kind of crease or fold at the top of the roof. 
I'll duplicate the group of logs and move them up to fill the gap under the roof. Then with the plane I used to scatter the leaves on, I'll extrude it out and I can use a difference boolean to delete the logs that are inside of this. Although trying to boolean this whole thing at once is giving me some problems, I assume it has to do with all the overlapping geometry. So I select as many logs as I can without selecting any that overlap, combine them into one object, then I do this for the rest of the logs, and bullying this works fine. Now I want to create the front door. I'll make the door itself by duplicating a few more logs and rotating them vertically. And then I want to make a rope and wrap it around this to make it look like it's what's holding it together, which I'll make by first creating a helix and adjusting the settings some. Then I'll go to edit and open the duplicate special settings. I'll set the geometry type to instances, rotation to 90 degrees, and the number of copies to three. And the result of this will be having four strands, each rotated at 90 degree increments. And because these are instances, I can continue to edit the settings on the original, and it will affect all of them. Once I've got something that looks like a rope, I'll select all of them, go to Mesh Combine, and Delete History. Now I have the rope made. To wrap it around the door, I'll go to the top view and enter the Pencil Curve tool, and just draw a few loops around the door. And these don't have to be perfect. Then I'll edit this curve with Soft Select. I'll set the falloff to Linear and the falloff mode to Surface, grab one of the endpoints, and just lift it up. I'll continue to nudge these points around to better fit the door, and once I'm done, I'll select the rope mesh, the curve, and then create a curve warp deformer. The rope wasn't quite long enough to make it all the way around the curve, so I'll go to the deformer settings under mesh scaling and scale up the length some. Now I want to create a procedural material for this. First I'll adjust the UVs so that they fill the whole tile. This circle on the top and bottom are the caps, and I don't really care about these since they won't be visible. So I'll assign a new redshift material to the rope, create a ramp texture, and plug this into the color. On the UV texture placement node, I'll set the UV repeat to something very large, so that way the texture is repeated several times across the rope. Now I can add flags to this ramp of various brown shades, and it looks like threads going down the ramp. I can also experiment with the UV wave and noise settings to try and break up the threads. And once I have something that looks good, I want to fine tune this material some, but before I do that, I want to get everything else in position. I'll create the second rope, add some variation, group all the door parts together, and then move it into position on the house. I'm going to cut away the logs for the doorway, but first I want to make some door trim by duplicating another log, straightening it out, and then flattening its sides. I'll put a copy of this on the left and right side of the door, then create a box roughly the size of the doorway, and use a difference boolean to remove the logs in between, just like I did for the roof. To finish this off, I'll add some controls, one for the entire house, and then a second for the door. I'll move the pivot where the door hinge would be, and then parent the door to this. I'll create a redshift dome light and plug in an HDRI. This is just to give me some rough lighting so I can dial in all the materials. I'll be rendering an ACES color space, and as Redshift doesn't support Maya's native color management settings, I'm technically supposed to convert these textures outside of Maya, but I'll often, and in this case, just use color correct nodes to adjust sRGB textures to look right in ACES. Of course, every good leaf has translucency, so for every leaf material, I'll plug the leaf texture into the translucency color and turn the weight to 1. Now back to that unfinished rope material, I'll add a bump map node and plug the ramp's red channel into the input, and then I'll just adjust the uh, reflection roughness and weight some. Of course I may make some more adjustments to these materials when it's in the scene and the environment is all set up, but for now I'm ready to call this done. Now I want to create the set that the animation will take place in. I'll start by referencing in the house I made, then I'll create a plane and add a pretty significant number of subdivisions, and I'll sculpt this into a mountain. Starting with just the standard sculpting tool, I'll set the falloff to something pretty sharp, and I'll set the direction to Y, so I'm only moving vertices up and down. I start by forming just the base hill. Where areas get too jagged, I use Shift to smooth them out. I also use the Flatten tool here and there.
Once getting the main plateau defined, I'll lower some areas and raise others to make little ledges here and there. Again, I'm mostly just using the standard sculpt tool and the flatten brush. I put more attention to the top since this will be mainly where the focus is. I obviously want it to look natural, but I also want to make sure to leave a reasonably large flat area so there's room for the actual animation to take place. So far I've been focusing on the overall shape. I noticed it's still looking a little bit too cylindrical. So I switched to the grab brush and set to something pretty large. I use it to move some chunks around to break up the overall shape. Also, so far I've only been moving vertices up and down, so I can use this tool to move them from side to side to form these kind of overhanging cliff shapes. I select the mountain and go to Mesh and Remesh. The settings here will depend on the size of everything and the density you want the mesh to be, but I figured this kind of topology will lend itself better to looking more jagged and rocky. Once that finishes, I switch back to the flatten tool and just go around flattening out small areas at a time to try and cut down on the roundness of things and also make some hard edges. I also experiment with a few different stamps to try and help with this. Beyond that, I add some more finer details here and there and just keep tweaking various areas until it looks good to me. Although with this kind of stuff, it's not always obvious when to call it done. I find if I feel like I'm not making much progress to just take a 5 minute break, and then when you come back it's easier to assess what you're working on. Once I'm happy with this shape, I just need to fix up the UVs. First I do a UV planar project in the Y direction. The slope of it's pretty stretched though, so I go to the UV editor and unwrap this, and then I just want to scale it to all fit inside one UV tile. To finish this off, I'll reference in this tree asset I have. I don't remember exactly where this came from, I believe it's part of a pack I purchased at some point. But in a similar situation as the log model I used, I search around the internet and there's tons of tree models out there, many of them at no cost. So now with the tree in position, I have all the essential pieces of the set ready to go, so I'm ready to begin animating. But this concludes part 3. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching, and feel free to subscribe to the NVIDIA Studio YouTube channel for more videos like this.